Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and today we are going to be looking at the audio import feature in Guitar Pro 8 and how we can go about using that to help us with our transcribing. This is an incredible tool, a one-stop shop if you like, for transcribing within Guitar Pro. You can import your audio, you can sync up your transcription to your audio, and you can listen to the audio and transcribe based on that all in Guitar Pro without having to switch back to a piece of software like Transcribe or going over to a door over and over and over again. So I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, please do let me know in that comment section below. Hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to pick up a copy of Guitar Pro 8, there is a link in the description. It's an affiliate link. So purchasing it via that link is going to support the channel. So consider doing that. Right, over we go. Let's take a look at this. So here we are in Guitar Pro 8. I'm going to go up to the view window and I'm going to click on show audio track. Now I can drag and drop an audio file or click to browse files. I have an audio file over here that I'm going to drag in. Now when I import this into Guitar Pro, sorry, I need to save it. So let's just save it. When I import this into Guitar Pro, now I have an actual audio file. Now the way this works is a little bit a little bit confusing initially, I think, because when you press play, Guitar Pro is only going to play as far as you have bars. So my first tip would be to add lots of bars. And if you look at the bottom of the screen when I do this, you're going to see the audio file start to appear more in the bottom of the screen. And I'm just going to go until I filled that audio file out. So that's the entirety of this audio file. Now, if I go back to the start of the transcription, in fact, when I click anywhere in the transcription, you can see we actually move in the audio file. Now, the thing that you have to consider when doing this is that your audio file might not start on beat one. In fact, we can see very visually down here. I guess I can make this a bit bigger for you. Do it like this. We can see very clearly down here that the first beat of the click is actually here. It's somewhere in the middle of a bar. We want to correct that. So I can actually come up to this button here and click this to drag this along and make sure that the uh, guitar profile starts at that on that very click there. Now we want to put a tempo marker in. Now there are going to be lots and lots of ways that you could go about doing something like this. My favorite way, uh, maybe this is an old habit, is to uh, use the, the click, the uh, automated click. So if I listen to the track, I know how fast this is by going over to my tempo marker. Sorry, I should do that at the start of the track. And I should be able to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Guitar Pro is estimating about 117 BPM. But we're actually going to be able to check that. Now you see what happened when I did that is all of these markers here, they actually changed where they were. Everything shifted along based on that tempo being at 117. Now when I press play. Now in theory, I should just be able to click either on the transcription, so at the start of the bar, or down here in the audio file. And I can already see that this is actually a little bit misaligned, okay? So let me go over here so you can really see this. We can see the transient here. This is where that beat is. So if I click this arrow up here, I can actually drag this tempo marker along and make sure that that actually is exactly on the beat. I could do the same here. This one's a little bit far that way. Now, what this tells me is that my tempo click was ever so slightly off. Now, I'm just going to be able to go through this. And I could make tiny little adjustments to this. And when I say tiny adjustments, these are the tiniest of adjustments. I actually don't think these are that important. Now, for anyone wondering, this is Ross Campbell playing guitar. Uh, so I'm going to delete the excess tracks. Now, when I take a look at my transcription, I am now perfectly in sync with the uh, with the audio track. As the track plays, everything's going to be perfectly um, perfectly organised here. Now. I, being somebody that can read music, and I, I would say I'm relatively fluent in my reading of music, my understanding of rhythm, rhythmic comprehension and all that stuff, I don't need to have any visual cues to tell me where this falls in the beat. If you do, though, if you have a little bit of struggle with these sorts of things, I need to put a swing marker in it because it's swung. Um, we can, look, Watch what happened when I did that. So 
when I put that swing marker in before, we had just where the beats fall, down here, let me make that a bit bigger for you, just where the beats fall, but when I put that swing marker in, suddenly these dotted lines come in to show you the framework for that triplet count. And now it becomes very clear for me to see that the first note appears here. Now this is, if this is beat one, should be able to click, should be able to click somewhere like this. This is beat, that's my marker for beat one. That's my marker for beat two. This is the second triplet. This is the third triplet of beat three. Now I don't recommend learning to transcribe like this. I would recommend learning to use your hearing to be able to hear that. But the point is I can very clearly see that this note falls on the third uh, beat, in the third beat, I should say. So one, two, this is my third beat. It's on the third 16th note. It's that note. Um, and now, I can put it, I can start putting my notes. Now, of course, I have been transcribing a very long time. So when I hear someone play this, I know exactly what's being played. I can see it in my mind exactly how he's playing, what he's playing here. Um, that's, a skill that takes a long time to develop. It really just does, does take a long time to develop. But you can totally get there with this. So these are our the first notes. We're moving on. So we're just staying on up here. And that, being able to click down here, I'm actually going to zoom out of this. I don't need that much. Uh, I can write this out. Ba dum ba ba. It's a triplet. Ba ba ba. Sorry, I'm going to make my face smaller. Actually, I'll move me down here. You probably don't need to be able to see my face. Um. Ba. Oh, he actually moves. Now. This is, like I say, wonderful. So he doesn't play, uh, sorry, oh, let's click here. Yeah, he does play on the last eighth note of the bar, uh, fifth fret. So looking at this transcription now, I'm just doing lots of tweaks in design mode just so I can have it all on one screen so you can, uh, so you can see all a bit bit more clearly. Now when I look at this and I go over to each note in this in this um part of the transcription, let me zoom in on this. Probably not as much as that. When I look at each note in this, down here, I was trying to point with my fingers here. If you look down here, you can literally see where each note falls in the audio file. And because I've spent the time to get the synchronization between the audio file and the transcription correct. I can actually use this as a visual cue. I wouldn't recommend it, but I can actually do it. There are a few little idiosyncrasies, like for example, these are written as eighth notes, and therefore down here they actually display as eighth notes. It's actually appearing exactly halfway between these th these beats, but it would actually be playing the note there. So there's a slight discrepancy between the, the visual things there. And that's another reason why I wouldn't really rely on, on doing these sorts of things. But the point is using this as a transcription tool is going to be wonderful when working with audio. Now, of course, there are some downsides to this, aside from the idea of, you know, relying on your eyes to do transcriptions. I'm saying that as though that's a negative. If any of you have watched my live transcribing videos that I do on YouTube, I'm usually always working from videos because it makes it more interesting for you guys to watch what's happening, right? Uh, and that is the case, but also it makes it easier to transcribe because I can see what's happening. I think Guitar Pro are definitely missing a trick currently. I think um, the inclusion of video compatibility would make this a, a real game changer. Video is integral for me. I'm still going to be using soft uh, transcribe, the software, uh, for the foreseeable future until video gets introduced here. But this is definitely a nice option if I go back to it. There are a few other options that you can toy around with in this audio file. So when I am listening to this audio down here, there are filters that you could put in. So let me just isolate the audio for the guitar. I'm just going to loop this section. And you might find that the speed for that is, I'm just constantly having to move my face around, aren't I? Move my face over here now. Uh, you might find the speed for that is wrong, so let's bring it down to 80% speed. 
a nice feature. Um, if I want to hear this a little bit more clearly, I can click this drop down box and in this drop down box, again, moving my face, in this drop down box, uh, there are the options to, to tweak the EQ. Now again, it doesn't have the quite the same level of EQ controls as other options out there, but just being able to attenuate that bass, enhance the bass, You may find they they will help you. You may find it. Uh, for me personally, they're not. The, it's not the you know a full suite of options, but it is nice to have these uh, as options. And then, of course, lastly, when you are working on your transcription, uh, the way I'm dealing with this when I'm writing this out is I down here in the mixer panel, I can control. I can either mute my guitar profile when I press play. or I can have my guitar profile play along with it, which is generally speaking how I want to have this work, but you do have that option. And then of course, using their new focus and unfocus section on the track, let me bring it back to full speed. I can adjust this to adjust the level of mix between the guitar track that I have selected and the audio file. So. which in its own right is a is a wonderful tool. And then just one last little tip for you if you're looking to use this as practice tool. If I come up here, I can put a custom speed on this down here. I can put in a speed trainer. Uh, let me set the custom values for that speed trainer. So we want a progressive speed trainer going from 70% speed to 100% speed. We want it to do, uh, let's say, let's make it 5% increments. And every... Uh, two repeats of this. So now when I press play on this, it's going to play at 70% speed and every two times round, it's going to get 5% faster. So this is a nice practice tool. A little bit faster. little bit faster still so a nice practice tool there and i see a lot of potential in the future for products be them album transcriptions or, or lesson downloads or anything where you can have this uh, suite of tools if you like you can import audio files into the the products that you buy and everything be lined up like this for you so you can use it as a wonderful practice tool can't say enough good things about this and i highly recommend that you go and check it out again link in the description either upgrade there is time to upgrade from guitar pro 7 to guitar pro 8 for a stellar deal of i believe 25 euros or you can just buy the software outright again using that link will support the channel if you have enjoyed this stream i would have uh, stream if you've enjoyed this video this is a, a video not one of my streams if you have enjoyed this video i would encourage you to head on over to my patreon page again link in the description and be like one of these awesome people it will get you access to my weekly guided practice routines you can get access to my weekly guided ear training sessions you can download hundreds of guitar profiles think of the fun that you could have with guitar profiles from my patreon page and this new functionality absolutely fantastic if that doesn't suit you can also head on over to amazon and check out one of my many books again how great would they be if we had uh, interactive guitar pro 8 files for all of these transcriptions very very cool i see a very exciting future ahead of us in the guitar scene thanks so much for checking this video out guys please do let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you for more guitar pro 8 tutorials very soon goodbye